Today we're going to talk about snowshoeing for beginners. You'll want to stick around. Welcome back to Outdoor Skills Made Easy. You know, many years ago when I first tried snowshoeing, it was not a pleasant experience. You could either choose from a round bear paw style snowshoe that was very heavy or a very tall, more narrow, but long snowshoe that was difficult to work with. Today we're going to share with you how to choose the correct snowshoe for you. Let me show you how that's done. Snowshoes are designed to help you float on top of the snow. And there are really three things that you need to think about when you're choosing your snowshoes. The location, your weight, including your gear, and the snow type. So the location would mean, am I going to be hiking on trails that are already packed down? If you are, and that's the main trails that you want to hike on, then you can use a smaller, more lightweight snowshoe. But if you're hiking in powder or fluffy snow, then you're going to want something that's a little larger that will support your weight. The second thing is weight. You want to think about your weight plus all the gear that you're going to carry. And each of the snowshoes are designed to carry a certain amount of weight. And the third thing that you want to be concerned about is the type of snow that you're hiking on. Is it wet, condensed, and compacted? Those are going to be powder, lightweight, fluffy, and airy. So with the condensed snow, you need a smaller snowshoe, but with the light, fluffy snow, you're going to want to have something that's a little bit larger. Each set of snowshoes has a weight rating, and you can find those in the store if you're renting or deciding to buy. And these are a little bit larger for my weight if I'm not having a pack or something that I'm going to carry. They also have some wonderful bindings that will fit any type of shoe and some great claws here that will help you as you're working your way up steeper slopes or on icy conditions. So let me show you how to put these on. These are Alptrek snowshoes and they've got a simple binding you can just slide your foot into, work it to the front, bring the strap up around the back, and so these just lock into one of the little adjustment holes on the binding. We recommend that you do this at home before you go out so that you can easily slip your boots in and it's already set to your measurement. And then this has an easy adjustment on the front of your boot. Just pull that tight. Got some things to lock it in there and you're ready to go. A lot of people like to use gaiters. I like these snow boots because they've got a little elastic piece here that keeps the snow from going up into my boots. So I don't need gaiters with this setup. All new modern snowshoes are very easy to use and I love that the bindings move easily and these have cleats on the bottom. The other thing that you want to consider is the trekking poles. You can use a ski pole, a trekking pole, or poles that came with your snowshoes. Make sure that when you're in snow like this that you have a basket on the bottom of your pole and that just helps you with balance. Let's go! Even though snowshoeing is a simple activity, you may want to go first time with an instructor or join a group. And this will help you decide, am I gonna buy my snowshoes or am I going to rent them? And which sizes are really right for you? There are a couple of items of snowshoe etiquette that you should be aware of. First of all, don't go onto the groomed trails of cross-country skiers. And second, make sure that you take your turn being the lead dog when you're hiking with a group. This lets everyone share in the load of the extra work of breaking trail. And finally, a few more tips to make your trip safe and comfortable. First of all, always let someone know where you are, where you're going, and when you'll return. While you're trekking, make sure that you drink plenty of fluids, keep yourself hydrated. And a lot of people like to carry an extra shirt and an extra pair of socks. So when they get to the turnaround point, they can exchange those and make sure that they have something dry on for the trip back. We hope that this has been informative and interesting for you. And we hope that you'll join us again at OSME TV.